what? Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know how much people will be able to hear out there, but um, I'm just going to get the show rolling here and tell everybody that we're live from the camera mall in Ann Arbor. Uh, I don't even remember what episode show I'm on. I think I'm on 128 or 129. I didn't have to swing over to YouTube, but maybe somebody in the chat room can actually tell me what uh, what episode I'm on. So, hey, Adam, uh, welcome to the show tonight. So I'm sitting here in Ann Arbor at the camera mall uh, in their new, I guess I going to call it their educator space. They've got a gallery space up front that they're going to be opening up at some point in time. And in the back here is the the room where educators will kind of do their thing, kind of do what I'm doing right now. Um, hey, welcome to the show, Bob. Good to see you from Wisconsin. And Joe, okay, people are starting to trickle in now. That's good. I'll tell you what, chances are we've probably got more people watching in the audience, but I'll tell you what, Ann Arbor traffic, I don't necessarily blame them for not wanting to come out for the show. But a um, couple of people here in the audience tonight, we've got uh, Mr. Bob Panic. We can always count on Bob. He's got a glass of wine tonight. He's settling in for the whole show. And a cracker. Wine and a cracker. Uh, and uh, your name tonight, sir? Colin. I'm sorry. Colin. Colin? Colin. All right. And we've got Colin here as well. So uh, Colin tells me he's going to be a hard sell on the OMD EM5 Mark III that we've got here. And uh, kind of here just tonight to answer questions. We sort of did a live broadcast last week. Uh, once the uh, official press release was out there and the NDAs were lifted and we were able to talk about it, Mike and I sort of touched base a little bit on the camera. At that point in time, I had very limited hands-on time with it, just literally a couple of days. And two of those couple were actually horrible weather, so I really had very little shooting. But at this point, I've had it now for well over a week and I've actually run probably about six or 700 photos through this camera, which is it's a lot for me. I don't tend to run through that many images in that shorter period of time. So again, I'm just trying to open up the uh, <laughs> open up the chat room here to questions. And Mike Baining just jumped into the chat room from a plane. Of course, Mike is probably somewhere over Arizona or Nevada. I think he's headed to LA this week. So thanks for dropping in, Mike. Just literally don't drop in from the plane. Um, so I just want to open it up to questions. If anybody out here has any questions about uh, this camera, maybe things that are, everybody's seen the tech specs. That's really not anything that's hard to get information about. And I personally prefer to just talk about the user side of things. Um, for me, photography isn't necessarily about the tech specs because we're at a point in time in photography where uh, a junk camera is still a really good camera out on the market. So for me, it's a lot about usability, um, you know, how it feels in the hand, how it performs out in the field, uh, some of the features that I use when I'm out shooting. So if you've got any questions about that, I know, again, Hold up. Sorry. Uh, and which one did you bring me? The EM10 Mark III. So Bob handed me from the back table there the EM10 Mark III. For those of you curious about size differences between the two cameras, you'd be very hard pressed to tell which camera was which without looking at the button and dial configuration on the cameras. So if you're familiar with the EM10 line of cameras and their portability, uh, you, you really have that in the EM5 line of cameras. Uh, and of course, the EM5 line of cameras are a more robust, more solidly built weather sealed line of cameras with more features as well. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Bob. That was a really good thing that I hadn't even considered. I've spent a ton of time picking up the EM5 Mark II and holding them side by side and taking pictures and just feeling the differences in ergonomics. But um, I think a lot of people that might end up with the EM5 Mark III would maybe be graduating from an EM10 camera and they want the weather sealing and some of the added features. So I guess getting that comparison probably is a really good idea. And uh, like I said, thanks. I've got the EM10 Mark II, the 5 Mark III is five grams heavier. Okay, so Colin said that from the spec side of things that the, you said you have the EM10 Mark II and the EM5 Mark III is only five grams heavier, but you end up with the weather sealed body. And again, uh, I think definitely a much more much more user-friendly interface as far as how the buttons and dials are configured on this camera. And then of course, it's way more feature rich as well. Maybe for somebody who's a street shooter, that might be the next step up to a weather sealed camera from the Pan F too. Sure, so um, Rick Kefgen is in the audience tonight as well. And he was mentioning maybe this as being a weather sealed alternative for the street shooters out there. I know that there have been some people in the street shooting community that love the Pen F. I, I love the Pen F. It's kind of like my my go-to travel camera or was my go-to travel camera, um, but it lacks the weather sealing. So, you know, if you jump into the EM5 Mark III, uh, you still have the flip-out screen like you do on the Pen F, which I know is 
kind of a nuisance to some hardcore uh, street shooters or whatever. But if you're already shooting with the pen and you're already used to the articulating screen, then it's really not any different for you at that point. But now again, you step into the weather sealed body and you start throwing on those uh, F1.2 primes that are weather sealed and it makes for a great uh, street kit as well. I think it's, it's pretty innocuous camera as well because you can get it in black. I know silver kind of stands out. It's not exactly the, uh, the street shooters dream setup. I don't think unless maybe you shoot, you know, Leica or something, I don't know, or some of the Fujis are silver, but, um, but the black cameras, I know a lot of street shooters prefer that. And of course you can get this in black as well. Um, so we've got Zim 44 in the chat room asking why we'd buy the five Mark three over the one Mark two. Uh, well, for one thing, portability is going to be the big thing. That's the biggest thing. I think for me, the EM one line is noticeably larger. Um, if I put on the 17 millimeter 1.8, with no lens hood on it, I can probably stick this down in a jacket pocket pretty easy. So it's definitely a pick up and go camera. Um, this is the kind of camera that stays in the car with me all the time. There's no reason not to have it with me. Whereas when I'm running with one of the EM1 bodies, uh, I tend to prefer those on a gripped setup anyways, personally, just because of the way they balance out. And, you know, here's your size comparison as well. You know, quite a bit difference in and height there not a ton but enough but then when you start looking at the depth of the grip uh this just becomes a much massively larger camera so em5 mark three you have basically all of the features of like the m1 mark ii save for um what am i missing from the em1 mark ii remember i told you guys i'm not like a spec freak i'm really not for me it's going to be all about feel okay yeah okay so that's true so the it does have a, a higher frame rate. Again, people that are running with the EM1 line of cameras tend to be somebody who is more into sports, like Bob Panic out here in the audience is always shooting football games and things like that. So the higher frame rate is going to be a boon for him. Uh, I haven't done any tests on focusing yet to uh, to tell if the EM5 Mark III can hang with the EM1 line as far as focusing goes. I think it's probably going to be a pretty high performer, though, because we do have all the added focus points now on the EM5 Mark III as well. Um, so Adam is saying, tell your friends at Olympus, we need 1.8 lenses reissued with weather sealing. I agree. I actually do. Um, Cause everybody loves the portability of it. Um, and then you put this portable kit together. This is the 12 millimeter F2. Um, no weather sealed lens. I'd love to be able to have this little tiny kit out in the woods with me running around and have weather sealing. So um, yeah, I agree totally. Uh, so Mike Timko is in the chat room and he's asking two slots for memory cards, one slot for you. Okay. Um, again, it's kind of one of those things where you're, you're getting into a certain niche and a certain, uh, certain set of requirements require a different tool at that point. And that's again, where you're going to jump up into the EM one Mark two or the EM one X to have that. Uh, Mike Banning in the chat room says that he's going to be using the Mark three with the 1.2 lenses when he's out in the streets and bad weather for sure small and convenient. I agree. It's granted not, you know, this small, I, I wish we had a 12 millimeter 1.2, <laughs> but we don't. Um, but still small enough to where you could work out in the streets with it and, and maintain that weather ceiling. How you doing? Not too bad, Jamie. How are you? Brandon? Yes. Ah, I remembered a name. <laughs> so we've got Brandon out here in the audience tonight and I haven't seen Brandon since probably the winter time. Were you here for the EM1X launch? Yeah. So it's been a good seven, eight months or something like that. Right. I remembered. I'm not getting so old that I can't remember these things. Um, so let's see. If, okay. So, so so Rick disagrees. And I think maybe I just forget things on purpose that I don't want to remember. Um, so let's see. What else? What other questions do we have here in the audience? Uh, how is the grip? Uh, so Adam Favre is asking how the grip is. And I don't know if you mean how the grip is just straight out of the box with the camera as far as the depth of it compared to the EM5 Mark II. Uh, it does have a more pronounced grip, so right out of the box. Ergonomics are much, much better. Bob's giving me two thumbs up, and if Bob's giving me two thumbs up, then I'll throw a third one in there and agree with him completely. So there are a lot of questions on whether or not the grip from the EM5 Mark II works on this camera. Um, I have not EM5 Mark II to test it. I can tell you that you do not get the option for a battery grip on this camera, but you do get the accessory grip, which actually gives you a little bit more, a uh, little bit more feel to it. And you do have the control dial and shutter release on it. Uh, we've got Mike Amico out here. Uh, he's, he's the guy who would answer this question for me. Hopefully 
I'm assuming that the uh, the button only grip for the EM5 Mark II does not fit on this camera, right? Or no, it's different because okay. the grip's different, and there's also no headphone jack on it. Okay, on on the grip, yeah. So no headphone jack on the grip, and it does take a different grip, and I figured it would just because the front profile of this camera is so much different uh, than the EM5 yeah. Mark II. So there's a redesign of that as well. So again, uh, if you need, if you feel like you need the extra battery on the Mark III and you planned on doing a grip with it, that's not an option. But I can tell you now, just from my almost two weeks with the camera, about I think it's two weeks today actually, um, that I haven't found a need to uh, swap a battery in the middle of the day yet at all, which is, I'm looking at Mike here. It's kind of shocking yeah, to me. Good. So I don't know what's going on behind the scenes as far as power management goes, but the engineers, software developers, whoever, have done something different with this camera to make the power management a lot better. I know, I think I've run, um, the other day I was up north, I think I ran about 350, 375 images through the camera and I got to where it just got down to the last bar on the on the battery indicator was blinking. And uh, I just popped open the door on the side and plugged it into USB and uh, plugged it into just, I, it was my cell phone charger. Oh, yeah. I hope that wasn't bad because I know with uh, with the EM1X, they say you should use power distribution. I think it's because you're managing two batteries yeah, maybe. Yeah, this one you can, you can actually use your computer or anything. Yep. So Mike confirmed it that I didn't do anything bad by just plugging it into my Android phone charger. And I did that right before I went to bed that night in my camper. I woke up the next day and it was charged. So related to that, the... Uh my OMD 10 Mark II has a proprietary USB cable. Right. Does this one have a proprietary USB cable? No, no. So Colin asked if there's a proprietary USB connection on this, and it's not. This is micro USB on this standard. one, so it's a standard right. connector. Right. Um, and I didn't bring any special cables. Like I said, when I went to my camper, I just had one for uh, a pair of headphones, and that's what I used. I just plugged it in and charged it up. What's the voltage on that battery? No. This is probably... You know, make me try to rinse. I'm getting old. I got to do the whole glasses thing. Uh, 1,210 milliamp hours on this battery, and this is an Olympus battery. So I don't know even if this is the battery that came with this camera or one I pulled out of my bag from one of my uh, EM10s. 1,210 on that one as well? Yeah, but it's, it's uh, 7.2 volts. Which oh, you asked USB. voltage, not yeah. milliamp hours. Got gotcha. you. Because USB only does 5 volts. So I obviously put some circuitry in to do it. Got gotcha. you. Okay. The reason you needed the power distribution one? Yeah because the VLN batteries are much more a higher powerful. voltage. Got you. We've got an engineer in the audience today, guys. So Bob was basically telling us that, um, that the voltage that's in these batteries is compatible with just standard USB charging. No, it's, it's higher, but it, probably close enough that they can make it work. Okay. Got you. Um, I should just turn the mic around and let Bob explain this. Thing. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, yeah, so it's, it's pretty convenient to be able to just use standard uh, USB charging. And like Mike said, I could have just plugged it into my laptop that night when I was editing photos and charged it right off of my computer as well. It's super convenient. So um, so Juke Jeff in the chat room says that he has the EM5 Mark II. Should he upgrade to the EM5 Mark III? He says, I won't shoot. Oh, it won't shoot 4K. Or he says he won't shoot 4K then I would say, why not at this point in time? Uh, you're getting pro capture, you're getting, um, you're getting that great high res mode, uh, the newer sensor for sure, like Bob mentioned. And I, I, really, I really don't have any reason you wouldn't, you know, because you've got both contrast and phase detect autofocus points now, the focusing is definitely gonna be better. I don't know what genre of photography you shoot, but I think all around, I think almost anybody's gonna enjoy this camera. A, yeah, for sure. I, and that's funny. So um, so Rick mentioned better battery life. And I think I'm going to agree, even though the battery was larger in the EM5 Mark II, there, again, I'll, I will go back to saying that something's going on in power management in this camera that just seems to make it easily as good as the other camera was. It might be a little bit better. Um, I'm, I'm not a chimper, you know, I'm not constantly reviewing all the images because I trust what's in the viewfinder. So that probably helps a little bit with the performance that I was getting as well. But again, I shot most of the day and never ran out of juice with my camera. So what I'm looking at, Jamie, is the uh, dedicated ISO from the X and also the um, the bulb uh, yeah. load on the dial. Which yeah. Is cool for getting into live comp and all that. 
Yeah, so Mike mentions, you know, having ball mode on the dial. And rather than just diving in, used to get into that setup, you just roll the dial over right into bulb so you can get into live comp and things like that a lot quicker. Um, and then what did you say you like the low, the low ISO, oh, the, the extended ISO? ISO? No, the oh, the dedicated so ISO good. button? Yeah. Yeah, that's for him. That's not for me. I don't change the ISO. <laughs> but for but for a lot of people, I know that that's part of your shooting pattern or your habits. So having a button dedicated to that definitely comes in handy. Um, I'm sorry, no, no, I was. Well, I have different different habit questions. No, okay. just fire so away. I, I, I'm confused. I'm reading the documentation. What is the native ISO on this? Is it 64 or 200? 200? Still, still 200. Okay. Yep, okay. extended as 64. I think it's what 200 to 6400 is native. Yeah. And then you're extended. But extended is, yeah. Yeah, the 256. Yep. So, so what, what would be the optimum IO for the best quality image? 200. 200. 200. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so. The same sensor as the M1. So. Okay. Yeah. Actually, that's one of the things you might want to point out is the sensor in the M5 Mark II is actually really, really old. Yeah. It's been around. That's the same sensor used in the Mark One, isn't it? No. No, it's a different one. Okay. No. But they it designed that sensor with Sony back in 2016. Okay. Uh, for the EM one. So. So they're talking sensor here, folks. First. For those of you who can't hear it. Yeah, that was a world's first. They're talking about age of sensors here. Yeah, it was a world's first sensor, where it had the 121 crosshair. Okay. Uh, phase attack. Nobody else does that. Everybody has, you know, some phase attack and all that, but nobody's doing 121 cross. Cross type across the board. Again. Yeah. So when you turn it vertically or horizontally. No, no, no. I was talking about the yeah. sensor that was in the EM5 Mark II. Oh, we're five, we're talking about the lineage of sensors yeah, the in the cameras two, here. The, uh, so Bob is trying to determine how yeah, the age of the EM5 years. Mark II sensor versus the EM5 Mark III. So yeah. That sensor's like seven years old. Yeah, yeah. well, the nice thing, like we were just talking about this. So the nice <laughs> thing about what they've done with, with the Hijack the Shell. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I totally missed it. Yeah, nope. missed what you were saying. The nice thing is the line is now, um, it's, a, it's a full line now uh, that has been refined. So now you have... Closer. You know, every camera in the line now from the EM10-3 up to the EM1X has the Trupic 8 processor. So, you know, we finally have a line that's all consistent, is what I want to say. The next and then your high end has all of your, your 20 meg across your phase attack with the Trupic 8. So, you know, it's it's just a great way to... I should I should probably just bring Mike on as a guest. No, seriously, it would make sense. Because because as I stated earlier in the show, I'm definitely not like a spec... I'm not going to call you a nerd, but I'm just going to call myself a spec nerd. I'm not a spec nerd. I'm more like more just the, the art side of it and the shooting side of it. Mike has to know all of the specs. And he knows a lot of the specs. He said he doesn't have to know them all, but he does. He's uh, It's his job. So Susan Pincus asked about a fitting for a remote cable release. Yes, Ask and you shall way. receive. And it's a standard. It's not anything proprietary. So um, – you could just jump online and get one of those cheap Amazon shutter releases if you want. They work perfectly fine um, in a pinch. So I took a pair of headphones one time and cut the headphones off of it, and you put the jack in. Not on this one, but – and if you just touch the two wires together, that's all it takes to actually trigger the shutter. Just telling you, you can MacGyver stuff if you have to when you're out. So it wasn't for me. It was for somebody else's camera. Did you explain to your wife what happened to her headphones yet? <laughs> her headphones? No. <laughs> and she doesn't watch my show ever, so we're good. Although tonight it's probably on the TV in the living room. The problem was they were $350 headphones. <laughs> they were beats, and somebody's getting beat for it. Um, so Jeff Zimmerl, uh was asking the question, aren't those the same guys in the audience from the EM1X live show? Uh, actually, a couple of them are. I think there's about three of them out here that were here for that show as well. So, um, and I missed it a little bit earlier. Mike Banning signing off. He flies first class, so he's probably getting champagne or something at this point in time. So, thanks for jumping on, Mike. Really appreciate it. Um, and let's see what other questions do I have up here. Da 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 da. So he, uh, Adam wanted to know if it ended up with the handheld high res mode. No, it did not end up with the handheld high res mode. Mike could probably maybe allude to. Some of the reason behind that, I think, it has to do with the processor capability. Yeah, I, don't really the, know. I know that the processing power of the X is just your dual, dual. Right. You're using so much power. That's yep. probably it, but I'm not sure. I mean, we're not at the dual multi core processor in this camera like you are in the EM1X, and that does take a lot of horsepower under the hood to be able to pull that off. So um, I haven't attempted it, anyways, uh, just to see. So I can't report on that yet. I will try it this weekend. I'm teaching a, a one on one in the UP this weekend. So. Um, I'll try and give it a shot then and see what the results are. Uh, if they advertise that it's not a feature, it's probably because it's not. Um, but I'm always trying to break a rule anyways just to see what happens. 
Um, so Joe wants to know if there's any, if there's an improvement on the continuous autofocus on the M3 versus the M2. I'm going to say that there is right out of the gate, just because we now have the the extended number of focus points on the camera for one thing, and then we've got phase detect and and contrast detect autofocus on as well. So again, I haven't tried birding with it, and in all honesty, I spent my entire time with this camera so far chasing the fastest thing I've ever seen in my life. And that's the slow changing fall colors in the state. <laughs> and I'm not having much success with it. Um, but I will do just a quick image share. I know that that's something that I always do on the show. And I apologize to everybody sitting out here that you won't be able to see them. They did offer me up a TV, but I forgot my cable to, uh, to be able to even do that. So I'm just going to go over and you guys will just get close your eyes and imagine what I'm explaining here. So I, <laughs> let's all get behind them and we can all see. <laughs> right. So I was up north this weekend. So this shot right here, all these images again taken with the uh, EM5 Mark III. The shot you're looking at now on the screen was taken with this lens right here. It's the 12 millimeter f2. Um, I found that I am actually editing the raw files and on one. Now I had had an issue in the past where uh, a buddy of mine who's an editor at Photo Focus told me that you really aren't editing the raw file. You're editing the JPEG preview. But um, the data in the raw, everything is changing in the raw file and as far as like uh when you're editing it doesn't say that you're editing jpeg i have no reason not to believe i'm not editing the raw file as far as i was able to push this image uh you couldn't push a jpeg this far with a semi truck so um i'm pretty certain for some reason on one has the ability to read these raw files already so again this uh, image was shot on the muskegon river up north uh with the em5 mark three and the 12 millimeter f2 single file so uh it was Kind of tricky lighting conditions i did the best that i could metering off of that and then i still had to pull shadows out in the uh in the scene there in order for you to be able to actually see some depth in the in the trees along the river there uh great color rendition on this so far i'm really liking it uh this next shot is uh, i'm a sucker for mosses and ferns and mushrooms and things like that so these are called british soldiers uh it, it's a lichen and uh, I'm, I'm liking it. They're kind of cool. So, but this was shot, I know, really corny. I'm so good at that. Uh, I'm, I'm a hit at kids' parties. So, <laughs> so this was shot with the new art filter, the instant film art filter, which I think it's probably going to be my new favorite art filter for a while. Uh, I had a, a love affair with the, uh, the vintage number two, I think it was, on all the other cameras, but this instant film one is just a blast to use. So this was shot with the 60 millimeter macro, again, just on a fence post at a park, uh, close up handheld, uh, image stabilization. I mean, come on people, we don't even need to talk about it with Olympus cameras anymore. Image stabilization is unlike anything out there. So it's totally phenomenal. Uh, and this was not shot wide open either. So this was shot at like F8, because I wanted a little bit more depth there. I wanted the fence that was behind the lichen to be in focus as well to make it part of the image. So again, at F8, I think I ended up with almost a half a second shutter speed on this one handheld with no tripod or anything. Uh, the next one, this is a stick bug on a stick. I haven't seen a stick bug in forever. And I was actually at an overlook up north and there were trees in the way and I was kind of irritated with the trees that were sitting in front of me. And something just stood out to me that didn't seem like it belonged on that branch and it was a stick bug. So I threw the 40 to 150 2.8 on there and uh, just kind of zoomed out to 150 millimeters and just fired this. This is a JPEG straight out of the camera. The first image that I shared on the river was i pretty certain it's the raw file that I was processing just because of how far I was able to push it. But the rest of these are all JPEGs right out of the camera. No processing, no changes, nothing, unless it was one that had an art filter on it. Uh, the next shot, again, this was me just kind of pushing the image stabilization on the camera. It's about a one second exposure just on a creek that I found walking through the woods. Uh, handheld, no tripod, again, about a second long on the 60 millimeter macro at F8. Just to, again, I wanted to slow down the water in the stream and really push the image stabilization in this little camera and see how far it goes. And one second is not a problem at all. And I'm not Mr. Rocksteady when it comes to form and all of that. Uh, next shot, again, another JPEG straight out of the camera, just on some back roads in northern Michigan. I was really happy with the uh, with the blues. You know, everybody talks about Olympus blues. Uh, they're still there, alive and well in this camera. Uh, another shot of some a clump of expired oyster mushrooms. Uh, I'm kind of a mushroom forager, so I knew what these were. I was a little disappointed I didn't catch them when I could take them and uh, eat them. 
But again, this is with the 40 to 150 f2.8 at 150 millimeters. I love shooting with that lens, you know, wide open at 2.8 at 150 millimeters, just so I can kind of blow that background out and give a lot of good separation between my subject and background. Uh, really happy with uh, Bob replaying the broadcast in the background, kind of throwing me for a loop. <laughs> um, really, really happy with the, uh, the color rendition out of this camera. Uh, again, totally floored with it. It's, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of the feel that I get out of the pen F and I wish I knew more about the color science, how this all works in these cameras, but I personally feel like different cameras just render colors a little different. And this to me is reminiscent of how the pen F feels. And I love the color rendition in that camera. Uh, the next one, again, 40 to 150 F2.8, again, with that, uh, with that instant film art filter that I'm kind of falling in love with. And this was me, again, just kind of testing how quick I can acquire focus on a subject. Um, I know it's not a bird in flight. I'm not Scott Bourne. I'm Jamie. I shoot drinking fountains in parks. Um, and so it acquired focus pretty much instantaneously like, like you would expect. Uh, I just wanted to see how this art filter also affects different colors. So I was pretty intrigued with the blue on this drinking fountain. Just wanted to see what I would end up with a finished product, the JPEG out of the camera. Uh, and then the last one is with the 60 millimeter macro. Again, the park that I was walking through, there are all these ugly brown benches and falling apart wooden benches. And then this one red bench that just kind of really stood out to me. So uh, threw this one into the pop art number two, just to kind of play along, play around with that and just see how it turned out again. Kind of happy with how that worked out. Really liked it. Um, hopefully, if I've got any questions, corny is what makes Jamie, Jamie, Steve knows me very well. Um, so Juke Jeff asked if there are any built-in ND filters. No, there are no built-in ND filters. That's kind of a crazy cool concept. I'm not sure how that works out, but this camera does not have that. I'm not really familiar with that either in other cameras. Um, oh, he didn't say live ND. He said ND. So maybe if you mean, if you mean live ND, um, no, that's not uh, in this camera as well. So, um, and then David just kind of jumped in and saying that he liked the fall colors on the river shot. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You should come on up, David. Uh, I'd like to take you around up north and shoot those fall colors. Does anybody in the audience have any kind of questions about this camera? Anything you uh, haven't seen in a press release or heard anybody talk about online that maybe I can answer? Again, uh, technical spec uh, specs, throw those over in the corner there to Mike Amico. He's, he's your guy. If you want to know just about how it's kind of held up for me, battery life, things like that, how lenses balance out on the camera, um, real world shooting things. Uh, that's kind of why I'm here to talk about that tonight. For the small form factor, it still feels good in the hand. It does, you know, and again, I think it all goes back to just having the deeper grip on the camera. It just, I don't have, I don't have big giant meaty hands. You know, I've got, you know, perfect sized hands. So this, <laughs> this camera fits me perfectly well. Um, but I know Mike has bigger hands than I, I do. A, I was using the Peak Design wrist strap all weekend. Yeah. I just have it on my wrist and I could just hang that thing. And just let it dangle. Yeah, it just dangles nice. You know? So Mike was saying he used the Peak Design wrist strap, just kind of had it secured around his wrist and just kind of walked around with it, just kind of dangling in his fingers the whole time. You know, the wrist is wrist strap is always a nice backup just in case. But um camera bring back those one point eights or two point oh primes. Yeah, that's a very good point as well. So um Mike was saying that it's a great camera to kind of get people back yeah. into using the one point eights. Or if you don't have the 1.8 primes, this is a good camera to kind of motivate you to invest in those because it does make a crazy portable kit. Uh, the 1.8 primes live on my Pen F. Uh, my Pen F is probably going to get lonely and end up, I'll probably start putting all my legacy glass from the 60s and 70s on the Pen F and then putting all the 1.8s on yeah. the EM5 Mark III. Yeah. Oh, and the 14 to 42 easy pancake. Uh, good point, Bob. I mean, if you put this lens on, most jacket you could probably put the m5 mark three in with this pancake lens on it and just really not have an excuse to not take it a camera automatic lens cap too the auto lens cap that oh that, that so. yeah right i haven't seen that in a minute i like that that's kind of a fun one too um so steve looking says considering you're shooting an em1x and em1 mark ii would you feel comfortable using this as a second body yeah there's no reason i wouldn't the uh the camera is fully capable. Um, am I going to use it as a second body um, when I'm shooting an NFL football game? If I had to use it as a backup, why would you not have it as a, as a backup? If you don't have a second EM1X or a second EM1 Mark II, there's no reason to not bring this along as a backup. It'd be really great is to throw 
an eight millimeter fisheye on it and it can sit in your bag mm -hmm. something you don't use very often you just literally whip it out and shoot That's right. yep yeah. yeah there's always a use case scenario for for why this could be a second body anything could be a second body but if you're going to go get a second body why would you not go get probably what is going to be the newest camera in your bag you know that's got the latest tech in it as well colin has a question too yeah i'm, I'm going on a uh, european river cruise in the spring and i want to travel extremely light yeah any comments on the kit lens the 14 to 150 kit lens great lens for sure um you said the 14 to 150 or the 40 14 the 14 to 150 is an incredible lens, lens that's offered with this okay camera. yes yeah. no it's an astounding setup yeah, i mean you literally are going to have a uh, a one body one lens will do it all i mean 14 millimeters is pretty wide you know you'll be able to get great wide shots no so colin's going on a european cruise in the spring he said he's going to take me and i will carry his camera for him and uh he wanted to know if the 14 to 150 would be a great accompaniment to the em5 mark iii so you're available as a second shooter <laughs> what you're saying i can sherpa as good as anybody else um so when i first got here this evening colin said he was going to be a tough sell and then leaned in and said he actually already pre-ordered the em5 mark iii so maybe not the toughest sell in the audience and um but speaking of selling i'm gonna throw this out there so i spoke with uh desmond here at the camera mall and just like he did with the em1x launch he threw in a gift or a, a freebie with the people that pre-ordered through the camera mall and he's going to do the same with the em5 mark iii um if you're worried about the battery, which I think I've stressed enough that you shouldn't worry about the battery, uh, don't worry because Desmond will give you a second battery and a dual battery charger if you pre-order through the camera mall. And you don't have to live in Michigan. You don't have to be in Ann Arbor. You don't even have to like me. Uh, if you just get on the camera mall's website, cameramall.com, cameramall.com, and pre-order your camera through there. Uh, I know we've got people that are viewing right now out of state they ordered their EM1Xs through Camera Mall because Desmond was throwing in a battery and charger, and he's doing the same thing for this as well. So the pricing stays the same. I mean, if yeah. they went to Amazon, yeah. you're not going to save anything at all, and Amazon's not going to give you a free battery and a charger, so why not support a local brick and mortar? That almost sounded like it rhymed. Support a local – I don't know. Maybe, maybe it didn't. Anyways, it's been a long day for me, and I'm probably support a brick and mortar. And order. And order. <laughs> I don't know, folks. I've had a long day. I drove here. I talked to you guys. I talked to the audience. You know, uh, Mike says I'm not Dr. Seuss, and I agree. So <laughs> I don't need another coffee, Bob. Just ask my wife. I did call you Bob. Sorry, Rick. I'm, I'm calling people by the wrong names. So <laughs> we have literally hit the wall here at the end of the show tonight. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank you guys for stopping in and hanging out in the audience. Uh, I'll be hanging out for a while afterwards. If you've got any kind of questions that I could answer that you didn't want asked on air because you're camera shy, unlike me, um, just flag me down and I'll be glad to answer your questions. And I'll see you guys in – Mike and I haven't even discussed. Are we going on the air again next week? That would be three weeks in a row. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Just tune into the next show, and I'll see you guys later.